Mesdames et Messieurs, nous avons devant nous ici ce monsieur qui est un comptable qui nous vient du Ghana. Il est ici aujourd'hui pour témoigner et remercier le Seigneur pour tous ses bienfaits à travers l'usage de l'eau d'onction du prophète. En fait, son enfant est aux États-Unis et il continue ses études. Et lorsqu'il avait fini, il avait besoin de voyager pour aller assister son enfant lors de la cérémonie de remise de son diplôme. Malheureusement, le visa lui fut refusé une fois déjà. Et la deuxième année, il appliqua, on lui a encore refusé le visa. Une troisième fois, il a encore essayé, le visa lui a toujours encore refusé, été refusé. Il arriva ici à la synagogue église de toutes les nations et expliqua son problème au prophète qui lui dit que prochainement, quand il ira encore à l'ambassade, il recevra son visa. Alors, il avait une interview à l'ambassade des États-Unis au Ghana le 3 décembre dernier. Et quand il était, au lieu de lui poser des questions pertinentes, seulement quelques petites questions lui avaient été posées. Et on lui donna un visa de 5 ans. Il est ici pour remercier le Seigneur. Comme Dieu ne fait, pas tout à, ne fait rien à moitié, il reçut aussi un autre visa de 5 ans pour l'Angleterre. Il est aussi ici pour remercier le Seigneur pour tous ses bienfaits et inciter tous ceux qui sont là et qui doivent aussi témoigner à venir afin que leur miracle aussi puisse s'accomplir dans leur vie. Gloria a Dios, acabamos de escuchar el testimonio de ese caballero que viene desde Ghana y nos cuenta que es contador público y nos dice que su hijo estudia en los Estados Unidos de América, él trató de ir a su graduación pero no pudo porque la visa le fue negada, él intentó tres veces aplicar para la visa pero tras tres veces se le negó la visa, después de que vino a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones se encontró con el hombre de Dios, el hombre de Dios le dio agua de unción, él roció el agua de unción en sus papeles, lo sometió de nuevo y gloria sea a Dios, él recibió una visa de cinco años años para Estados Unidos y no solo eso también Dios lo bendijo también con una visa para el Reino Unido de cinco años. Gloria sea a Dios. Hallelujah. One more time, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Let us put our hands together once again for Jesus Christ. God is really doing great things through the medium of the anointing water. And we have just listened to a testimony. And now we have another testimony to listen to. And God bless you as you listen to this wonderful testimony in Jesus' name. Madam, can you please tell us your names and your testimony? My name is Harriet Mpinganjira. I'm wife to Minister of Information from Malawi. And the lady beside you? The lady beside me is my daughter. And share with the people of God your wonderful testimony. Um, my testimony goes like this. I came to the Synagogue Church of Nations in uh, January this year. And I was opportune to receive an anointing water. Uh, prior to that, I was having several problems. And one of the problems was, was a rotten tooth. And I did indicate on my medical report that I had problems with teeth. The man of God prayed for me. And I administered the anointing water. I went back home. I was still administering the anointing water. 
Now, what I didn't realize was that problem had gone. Uh, before I came to the synagogue, I used to visit the dentist almost every other day because of the pain. The pain was so severe that I used to get uh, injections of diclofenac twice a day, which is not advisable, but because the pain was so bad. Um, after my visit to the synagogue, I went back home. I forgot all about my dentist. Then he called me because he was worried, and he says to me, what, where are you and what has happened to you? So I said, I'm at home. He says, what's wrong? How, is your, how are your teeth? I said, they are fine. He says, I don't believe you. I'd like to see you. So I went to see my dentist. He looked at me. Uh, he did some scans. He, he did several tests. And he said, I am shocked. Uh, for the first time, I've been a dentist for the past 15 years. I've never seen anything like this. In actual fact, I was scared to tell you, your jaw was rotten. So each time you came, I'll just give you these injections, hoping that something will happen. And uh, uh, when, you, when you didn't come back to me, I just thought that maybe something worse had happened to you. That's why I called you. So he says, what did you do? And I explained to him, I said I'd been to the synagogue church of all nations, and that uh, the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, had prayed for me, and that I'd been administering the anointing water. I even showed him the anointing water. He was very excited. He even said uh, he was an unbeliever. He's a Ghanaian. And uh, that from then on, he would start watching Emmanuel TV. And um, he would also administer the anointing water to his patients. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? So your testimony has won a soul for Christ? Yes, not just one soul. Many. A lot of souls. Because there were so many people who knew that I'd been in a lot of pain. I wasn't like this. I'd lost so much, pay, so much weight and people didn't understand why. But it, it was just a toothache. Mm. Mm. To God be the glory. So you mean, as at the time you came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, before you uh, got the anointing water, you were going through severe pains and you had to take uh, the kind of injection that you were not supposed to take twice a day. Yes, but because of the severity true. of the pain. That's and, very true. And also the doctor could not open up to you at first the, how terrible the case was until when you went back to him and he discovered that you were completely healed. Hallelujah. Yes. Shall we put our hands together once again for Jesus? And now tell us, since after the healing, tell us what are those things you can do with your teeth now that you could not do when you had the problem? Uh, during that time, I used to have a bridge. Then he removed it because he thought that was becoming septic as well. Uh, when I went back and he looked at my teeth, he now said to me, with the same faith that you have, uh, with the same trust that you have in uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua, I'd also, have to, I'd also like to have the same faith, and I'm going to make a tooth for you. I'll mold a tooth for you. So he did that for me, and he uh, put it on the, um, the broken tooth on the rotten jaw. Then afterwards, he put back the bridge, and here I am. Hallelujah. You can see. Glory be to God. So you mean now, what are the things you can do now that you couldn't do before? I can eat sugar cane. Mm. <laughs> I can eat um, all hard stuff. Um, I can eat maize. I can eat um, groundnuts. All the heavy stuff that I couldn't eat, I can eat now. I can chew. Let us clap for Jesus Christ. And for the benefit of those who are listening to your testimony, remember, we always have doubting Thomases. For the sake of uh, doubting Thomases, can you just touch the part where you were having a problem, press it, and let us see, are you having I, any I, pain? I can now press this jaw. There is no pain. It used to be very soft. Mm. Even my face was distorted a bit. Now I can smile. Hallelujah.
to God be the glory. And uh, tell us, when this miracle happened in your life, what was the reaction of people around you, family members, particularly your husband? My husband was very, very happy because he was very worried. That's why we even came to the synagogue. He didn't know what was happening to me. We went to the hospitals. He even said, my wife, maybe this is HIV. Why are you losing weight? Mm. What is it? So we went all over looking for help, and we couldn't find it. My husband, though he's a cabinet minister, he's, a very, uh, he's actually a servant of God as well. He's mm. very prayerful, and he's a believer. Mm. So most of the times we're praying with uh, the prophet on the screen, and even when we we're coming here, he said, my wife, you are healed. I said, but I'm still in pain. He said, yes, you are healed. You know, so when, when finally went to the dentist and came back and the dentist called him to confirm, he was the most excited person in Malawi. And yeah, yeah. he uses that when he goes to preach. He will go to preach and he, you know, he will give me as an example of what God does and what the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, is doing in the world for all of us. Despite that we're very far from Nigeria, other people have also got healed just by listening to my testimony at home. Mm. I had a sister-in-law who, who was also very sick. She's healed just because of my testimony. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together for Jesus one more time. Well, we thank God Almighty for your life and for this wonderful healing you have received. And uh, before we ask, uh, ask you for your advice or words of encouragement, we want to ask your daughter. I believe your daughter knew when you had this problem. She yes. knew when you had the problem. Let us yes. hear from her as well. Okay, come over here. So, sister, please tell us your name and uh, tell us what you have to say about what God has done in the life of your mother. My name is Jill Kambalame. I thank God for what, done, uh, God, what He has done for my mom. It's true what she's saying. I wasn't around at the time, but I heard about the severe pain she was going through. Uh, one day when I came back, the dentist called her and she told me to go with her to the dentist. When we got there, the dentist said, can I have a look at your teeth? Because I don't believe what you're saying, that you're not in pain. So they did all the tests, the scans, and the dentist called me and said, I cannot believe this. Your mom is okay. I was scared to tell you people that your mom's jaw is rotting. And I said, why didn't you tell us? He said, because there was nothing I could do. I was just trying my best. And my mom started explaining to him what happened, where she went, and what, that she administered the anointing water. And he said, can I have one, please? My mom had um, a bottle in her handbag. He actually asked my mom to take that one to give to him because he also wants to be doing that to all his patients. And he believes that it's, it will not be him working, it will be the anointing water through Jesus and the man of God, T.B. Joshua. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, we thank God for everything. And tell us, as a daughter of Mama and uh, seeing what God has done in our life, we believe that this miracle has impacted your life positively what do you have to say to our viewers who are listening to this testimony uh, to all the viewers I would like to say there is no situation that God can't handle everything is possible and I personally I can say I have known and I have seen with my own eyes that Jesus is the way the, the Lord that we save is a true God he is the only way thank you very much put your hands together once again and let's hear from Mama. What word of advice do you have for everyone listening to your testimony right now? I would like to advise the viewers all over the world that uh, the anointing water is real and that uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua is a true prophet of God. Mm. We should not doubt it. And that um, even if they don't manage to come to Nigeria, distance is not a barrier. They could pray over the screen and it will work for them as well. I'd also like to, to advise my 
elite friends to say that as, as you go higher, it becomes more slippery. We should never forget God. We I can have all the money. We had all the money. It didn't work for me. My husband did everything. It never worked for me. Only Jesus. Only Jesus through the Halle anointing water. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much. Mesdames et Messieurs, cette, ces dames nous viennent du Malawi. Elle était arrivée ici en janvier 2013 pour un problème de dents, des, un problème qui lui donnait des maux très sévères et qui lui, elle avait beaucoup de peine à, à, à se déplacer, elle avait beaucoup de peine à faire ses activités, elle avait beaucoup de peine à manger. Et ici, le prophète a eu à prier pour elle et on lui administra l'eau d'onction. De retour chez elle, elle était complètement guérie et son médecin était carrément surpris de la vitesse avec laquelle elle a eu sa guérison. Elle est ici aujourd'hui pour remercier le Seigneur pour tous ses bienfaits et dire aux autres que l'eau d'onction est vraiment réelle et que le prophète Ibi Ochoa est un vrai envoyé de Dieu, que tout le monde doit faire autant pour venir ici et prendre possession de cette eau d'onction-là afin d'avoir des miracles dans leur vie. Bueno, si nos acabamos de escuchar el testimonio de esta mujer que vino a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones con el problema de una fisura en la mandíbula causándole muchos dolores en el diente, el doctor dentista le dijo que tenía que remover los dientes para poder hacer una operación. Ella vino a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones y el, el, el hombre de Dios, el profeta Tibillo, lloró por ella y también le dio agua de unción al regresar a su país. Ella dice que ya no tenía ningún dolor y su dentista eh, le llamó, le dijo, ¿por qué ya no has venido a consulta? Le dijo, es que ya no tengo ese dolor. Y el dentista le dijo que tenía que venir a hacerse unas pruebas el doctor le hizo las pruebas y encontró que ya no había ninguna fisura, ningún eh, problema en sus dientes, solamente puso un puente para poder cubrir el, el, el hoyo que tenía en la mandíbula Gloria sea a Dios So once again we thank you madam for coming to share this testimony with us and uh, now that uh, the Lord has done this great thing in your life we want to encourage you to Uh, stay true to our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, walk in the light of your testimony, make the word of God the standard for your life, and this healing you have received will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Let us clap for Jesus one more time. Send us your testimonies and prayer requests. The info at scorn.org. Send us your testimonies and prayer requests. The info at scorn.org. to us and share your testimony with us. Emmanuel, people of God, Emmanuel, my name is Rebecca Ahotsu. I'm a teacher by profession and I'm from Ghana, Accra. My testimony goes like this. Um, at first, my husband and I, we have been having stagnations in our career. So, um, This school that I wanted to start from seven years ago. Always when I want to start a school, something will just tell me you cannot do it. Then I'll say it's too difficult. This thing I can't do it on my own. Then my husband too. He has been waiting for his promotion. And the promotion I've been keeping long. So we decided to come here. And from here when we went back, We use the anointed water. This is what we have been using to pray. And always when we pray, we believe in what we are saying. That it is only God who can do it through the using of the anointed water. 
So, so you mean that you and your husband were facing stagnation in your careers? Yes. That you've been trying to start a school for seven years and every time you want to start the school, a voice will be telling you that you can't do it and you'll yes. be discouraged and not go ahead with it. Yes. And likewise, your husband was also facing lack of promotion in his career. Yes. So you came to the Synagogue Church for Nations, received the anointing water. Can you explain to us how did you and your husband minister the anointing water? First, let me introduce who my husband is. My husband is a immigration officer, and he works at the Kotoka International Airport there. So when we left here, the anointed water, we used it to pray. First, we heard that the man of God had been saying on the television that when you want to pray with anointed water, you have to read Psalm 51. Pray, ask for forgiveness of sins before you, you pray. So we have been doing that. After reading it, then we stand on it, we pray. So that is what we have been doing. And what happened after ministering the anointing water in Jesus' name? Yes. After we left here, just four weeks time, my husband was called for interview. So he went for the interview. Then later on, the promotion was given to him. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We can indeed see that when Jesus says yes, no man can say no. So the promotion that he has been waiting for for a long time was granted to him after ministering the anointing water in Jesus' name. Yes, and that was not only the, promo uh, the blessing that he has. He was also promoted to a higher rank. He was transferred to another region as a regional commander. Let's put our hands together for the miracle work of Jesus Christ. Please continue, madam. Now, I've also started my school. I started it just July, 4th July, and I have 30 children now. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Do you mean this school that you've been trying to start for the past seven years? After ministering the anointing water, God Almighty provide the finances and you were able to start your school finally. Yes, because first, I wasn't able to start. Anytime I tried to start the school, then something would tell me, you can't, you think it's easy. But someone just called me. Rebecca, don't you know you can start a school for your, you can start a school. Meanwhile, she doesn't know I'm thinking of that. The person is my security supervisor in my own school. She told me that. Then I went ahead, quickly I started the school. Even before I started the school, my husband was not around. He was in his region. So I called him that, this time I'm starting the school. He said, you again, you've just said it. But to his surprise, as soon as he came back, I've started my school. And most of the parents have taken the admission form and they are on their way coming. They will soon come with their words. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We can indeed see that there's been a radical transformation in the careers of you and your husband through the medium of the anointing water. Yes. Madam, can you explain to us the pictures and the letter on the board next to you? The pictures. The pictures, these are the children. I'm this. These are my caregivers. I have three of them for now. I have two caregivers and one cleaner. This that they are wearing, the Lacoste is our Friday wear. So Friday we wear this. This is part of the playing ground. Myself, I'm here, and these are the caregivers. This is one of our classrooms. This is also some of the children. Hallelujah! And can you explain to us the rest of the documents on the board? This document, this is the promotion letter given to my husband. So, he was promoted to a rank, which is... So your husband was receiving his promotion immediately after he came to the Synagogue Church for Nations yes, and received the anointing yes, water. Yes, as assistant controller. But from the assistant controller, I was saying they transferred him to another region. And that rank was higher than this rank. That is to be 
the, region, the regional assistant um, controller. So he's now being promoted to the regional assistant controller yes. in his career. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We can indeed see that Jesus Christ has intervened in your affairs. He's put an end to your past of stagnation and given a wonderful breakthrough to you and your husband. Uh, what advice do you have for people out there? We know many people have been facing stagnation for a long time. They've been believing for breakthrough in their careers and they've been believing that Jesus Christ will answer them. What advice do you have for them? The advice I have for people here and out there that all the things here are not for jokes. Maybe you may think it's just something that I just brought here. No. I was thinking of doing this, but as soon as I used this anointed water and I was able to do it, this is to my surprise. And even my husband's own. You can see that this is double anointing, double blessing. So if you are here, just believe in God. Believe in the using of the water. When you are ministering this water, believe that this is the blood of God that you are ministering to yourself. Believe in it and you will have your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Yes, believing is our connection to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that God Almighty is using the anointing water as a medium to express himself in our lives. So now that you receive this wonderful breakthrough in your life and your husband's life, continue to follow Jesus on the way. May God's word the standard for your life so that what you receive can remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Mesdames et Messieurs, cette dame nous vient du Ghana et c'est une enseignante de profession. Euh, elle faisait face à de la stagnation dans sa carrière ainsi que son mari. Le couple faisait face à beaucoup de stagnation. Alors depuis sept ans, elle voulait démarrer une école, mais elle n'y arrivait pas parce qu'il y avait une voix qui lui disait que tu ne pouvais pas y arriver. Elle arriva ici avec son mari pour euh, prier et obtenir l'eau d'onction. Au retour chez eux, ils ont commencé par prier avec cette eau d'onction-là. Et quelques temps après, son mari a été appelé pour une interview qui lui permit d'obtenir une promotion dans sa carrière. Aujourd'hui, ce mari qui était un officier à l'immigration est promu comme euh, commandant régional euh, dans une région au niveau du Ghana. Cette dame elle-même aussi, elle a réussi par finalement ouvrir son école et au, depuis juillet dernier. Et au jour d'aujourd'hui, elle a son actif 30, enf 30 enfants à charge. Elle remercie le Seigneur pour tous ses bienfaits et incite tout le monde à se procurer de cette eau d'onction afin de voir des miracles s'accomplir dans leur vie. Gloria a Dios, acabamos de escuchar el testimonio de esta mujer y de su esposo que vienen desde Ghana y esta mujer nos cuenta que de hace siete años han sufrido estancamiento en su vida. Su esposo como oficial de migración eh, no había eh, recibido ninguna promoción en estos siete años y ella también quería abrir una escuela como negocio y des, es después que vinieron a la sinagoga Iglesia de las Naciones y adquirieron el agua de unción, ellos administrarlo. Su esposo fue promovido después de cuatro semanas de haber eh, recibido el agua fue promovido a comandante en migración y ella pudo abrir su escuela. Podemos ver las fotografías de su testimonio para la gloria de Dios. Continuamos. Right now, let's listen to this lady who's going to share her testimony of how Jesus Christ set her free through the medium of Emmanuel TV, simply by touching the screen of her television. So, Madame, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Please tell us your name and your testimony. My name is Obla Victoria Ojeka Eje. I'm Nigerian, but I presently live in Botswana. My testimony is about deliverance from alcoholism after about 35 years. 
I drank, oh, I drank most of my life. Uh, not so much when I was in the secondary school because I was in the boarding house. When I was in the university, because I couldn't afford it. But when I started working, I could afford it. And I drank almost every day. Somehow God was kind. Whenever I was pregnant, I would go off alcohol, but I would come back immediately, I deliver. And so I drank, I bought the drinks with my own money. And if anybody said anything to me, I said it was my money. I didn't necessarily get drunk, but I had to drink every day. I had to drink in the morning, I had to drink in the afternoon, I had to drink in the evening. I drank sometimes in the night. I always had a drink by my side. So, so, Madam, just uh, please, for the benefit of our viewers, just introduce yourself to us again. Tell us your name, where you're from, and also tell us what you do for a living. I am Obla Victoria Ojeka Eje. I'm a Nigerian working in Botswana. I am a civil servant. And you're explaining to us a wonderful testimony of how you have been delivered from the problem of alcoholism for 35 years. Continue okay. your testimony. So, as I was saying, I drank. Not necessarily. I lived with, for 30 something years in shame, in humiliation. Please. Because every time you heard me speak, you could smell the alcohol. I felt so bad about it. I had garlic about me, so that you could smell garlic and not smell the alcohol. I chewed gum. I hate chewing gum, but I had to chew gum just so that it will take out some of the alcohol smell. But you know alcohol, if you take even a little quantity of it, it will smell. I'm a Catholic. Usually before communion, you have to at least not take anything at all for at least an hour. I would get up early enough just so I could take alcohol, a glass of wine or two, at least, and give myself a space of at least one hour before, before mass, even if it was a six o'clock mass. I had to go for adoration in the morning it's about 5, uh, 15 a.m. I would get up early to take a glass of wine before going for the adoration so, because I wanted to be a bit clean before going to mass. It continued like that. I knew it was embarrassing my children because people were embarrassing them and tell them, talking about their mother drinking. It was embarrassing myself because whenever I opened my mouth, people would simply say, she must have taken some alcohol. I would go for meetings. And because I didn't want the alcohol to smell, I would scribble something for somebody else to say if I wanted to uh, make an intervention. It was that bad. And then in 2005, something bad, something really happened to me that really shook me. And it was all because uh, somebody said I was in a lounge somewhere and took a glass of wine. And I was reported as having taken a glass of wine in a Muslim country. It really shook me, as I said, and I decided I was going to do something about taking the alcohol. I went to a church where you would fast and pray to deliver yourself from, uh, from drinking. I fasted. It had to be dry fasting for about five days. No food, no water, no liquid. I would fast. I would pray for the five days. But on the last day, just as they are closing the fasting session, Half my mind would be on alcohol, and on my way back home, I would branch through somewhere and buy a bottle of wine. In fact, I would compensate for about two days for taking a lot of the alcohol just to compensate for five days of not taking alcohol. Everybody who knows me would say, if you said obla, they would say, buy her, buy her a bottle of wine, white wine or champagne. People who knew me from the university would say uh, they will remember our blast sitting in the hall, in the lecture hall, with a bottle, a tiny bottle of uh, uh, brandy in her bag, and taking a sip as a lecturer is teaching. So, even though I didn't get drunk and misbehave on the road, it was really embarrassing. And then last year, I came to the synagogue because of something else altogether. That was the first time I was here. I didn't talk about the alcohol. On my way here, I took a, enough alcohol on the plane to keep me through the two or three days I was going to be here. 
I left. The next time I came, I did the same thing. And then I was here in January. I left here. I went back, and I had a strange dream. In that dream, I seemed to be in a circle. And people kept pouring drink in the cup for me, and I was taking it. After taking the first one and the second one, the third one, I suddenly looked at the lady who poured it for me and threw the cup back at her. When I got up in the morning, I said, maybe God is going to deliver me from this alcohol after all these years and from this shame and humiliation. But then it took me until March, about the first week of March or so. I suddenly, I have a manual TV on in my room, in all the rooms in my house, actually. It's on all the time. So this night I woke up, and there was a man who was giving testimony here, who was talking about having taken alcohol for more than 30 years, who was talking about how his wife tried to persuade him to stop, and how it was difficult until one day he just, something told him to, t to touch the Emmanuel TV. When I got up from my bed, I didn't get up from my bed because I was going to pray. I got up from my bed because I was angry. I was angry at God. I placed my hand on the Emmanuel TV, all right, but I started shouting at God. I was quoting some parts of the Bible. I was saying, if, said, if, you, if I obeyed you, you would do this for me. You would deliver me. I don't know anybody else. I know you. Why can't you deliver me? That man didn't even want to be delivered. And you delivered him. I've been going for all sorts of things, and you will not deliver me. In the process of screaming, I was crying and screaming with my hand on the Emmanuel TV. I suddenly threw up. When I finished throwing up, I got up. I became calm. Picked up a bucket in the middle, around, around 2.30 or 3 a.m. in the morning, mopped, the, mopped it up, had a, uh, cleaned my face, brushed my teeth, and went back to sleep. The next day, I was told we had a meeting in the office and I had to rush. I rushed out of my house and forgot to take a glass of wine. <laughs> oh, come and let's stop for Jesus Christ! People of God, you do not know what it means to rush out of my house and not take a glass of wine after how many years of my life. I did not remember. I went for the meeting. I came back for lunch. I did not remember to take the glass of wine or two that I take with lunch. I went back. I came back in the evening. I went to sleep. The next day, the same thing happened. The third day, my driver says, uh, we, in Botswana, where I live, uh, where they sell alcohol, is called a liquorama. And he said to me, Madam, should I go through the liquorama? And I said, no. Then I got home and I, I was, oh, it's true. I haven't been to the liquorama and I haven't taken any alcohol. I still wasn't sure. I went to my room, suddenly went to go and take water. That particular fridge had been there. I have a number of fridges in my kitchen. That day I went to that one, and I saw half a bottle of wine. And I told myself, you mean I actually had half a bottle of wine in this fridge all this time, and I didn't take it. So I picked up a glass and wanted to take a, 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 a glass of wine. I couldn't take it. I diluted the wine. I still couldn't stand the smell. I threw the wine away. I waited for about two days again, or three days. I'm a stubborn person. I decided to go to the liquorama to buy a bottle of wine. The people were surprised. They asked me, Madam, did you travel? They all knew me, and they even knew the brands I took. So as I went in, they went to bring it. I said, let me pick a bottle. I picked a bottle. I got some. I opened it. I couldn't take it. I diluted it. I couldn't take it. I threw it away. I went back and waited for about a week. I then went back. And now picked a small bottle. I opened that bottle. People of God, my kitchen began to smell like a cheap beer parlor. The smell was awful. I couldn't stand it. I had to run out of the kitchen to throw away the bottle of wine, come back. Come back, mop the floor, use bleach and air freshener. That's how I stopped taking wine. Let's clap for Jesus Christ.
Adam, you mentioned something about uh, your children, what your children used to say when you used to take alcohol. Tell us what your children used to say and now what is their response after your deliverance? My children, when they were younger, really couldn't say much. They just watched helplessly. But I knew they were receiving insults. And from time to time, if I found out that maybe it's one of the house helps or something, I would, tell, I, would, I would really abuse the person. And if it was an adult, I would ask him or her, because I never drank in people's houses. I would just buy a lot of the drinks and drink in my own house. So I would ask you if you gave me money or if I drank, if you ever gave me a drink. So I knew they felt bad. When my daughters were graduating, both of them, they graduated from two different universities in the UK. The friends didn't know me. I went for the graduation. The, the only thing that each of them did on the day of the graduation was to beg me on their knees. Mommy, please, don't take any wine. Please, for our sake. We don't want our friends to smell alcohol from your breath. I felt so bad. But it looked like I couldn't help it. I just said, okay, we'll make a bargain. I will not touch the alcohol until after your graduation and after all your friends must have left. Then I will take it in the night. And I still took it. But when they came, after I stopped, they came in April to visit me. They came for Easter. They didn't see me taking alcohol. They were walking around me in tiptoes, on tiptoes. Because usually, if my drink got finished in the night, I would call the driver, I would pick, tell my child, go to, even if it's an hotel, go there and buy me a bottle of wine. They watched me, I didn't take wine. The bigger ones left, they didn't say anything. The, uh, the smaller one and, the, and my niece stayed. And I was coming here in July. I wanted to pass through here, so I told, my, I told them, I said, we are coming through the synagogue together, so that you will all be delivered. And they said, ah, mommy. I said, yes, that's where I got delivered. Haven't you noticed that I don't drink wine any longer? And they said, yes, mommy. We just didn't want to say anything because we were afraid to remind you. We were afraid <laughs> you would tell us to go and buy wine. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, madam, do you mean that now you don't have any desire after 35 years of being an alcoholic? Do you mean that you, don't, you no longer have any desire to take alcohol? I do not. I do not remember. I do not, in fact, yesterday I almost preached to a young man who was sitting beside me on the plane. He took beer and the thing was smelling so much. I tried to block my nose and I, I, I got up and started walking around because it smells so much. In fact, I was trying to tell him that don't spoil your life with alcohol. Because Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. That is an evidence that you abhorred the smell, even the smell, the scent of alcohol, which is a clear indication that you have received that wonderful deliverance. What advice can you give to people? Because, uh, as you said, you received your deliverance through watching Emmanuel TV by placing your hand on the television. What advice can you give to people in the same position you were once in, who are addicted to alcohol? I have two pieces of advice, really. The first is that distance is not a barrier. God is here. And if you have faith, just touch that television the way I did. And as I told you, I didn't even necessarily touch it, touch it in a prayerful manner. I was quarreling with God, but God still did it. Distance is not a barrier. My second piece of advice is that I am imploring, imploring Nigerians. I was in Nigeria. I didn't know anything about the synagogue. The first time I heard about the synagogue was 2011 in South Africa. And I tell you, it's because of my training that I did not disgrace myself. Because somebody asked me about uh, uh, the prophet, and I kept quiet because I didn't know who he was. Nigerians, you have something here. You, we are so blessed. We have something here. Well, we thank God, Madam, for that wonderful deliverance you've received through the wonderful grace of touching Emmanuel TV and receiving your deliverance. Just tell us, how long has it been now since you have stopped drinking alcohol? It's been nine months. And I went, you know what? I went to my village where everybody knows I like to take my wine, palm wine. 
I was there for five days. My uncle, who used to bring palm wine for me every day as soon as I got to the village, he came the first day with two gallons of palm wine. And I gave it to my workers. He came the next day. He didn't see me taking palm wine. He went and told the others. And they all came to greet me. They came to see whether it was really true that I had stopped taking alcohol. And then many people just started saying, we are going to the synagogue if that is where she went to stop taking alcohol. Let us clap for Jesus. Well, yes, we know that Jesus Christ can use any medium to express himself, to bring healing, deliverance, and all of God's blessings. And we thank God for what he has done in your life. He has completely transformed your life. Someone who was an alcoholic, who is now free from taking alcohol, and even abhors the scent of alcohol. Well, we thank God for your life, and we just want to advise you that as Jesus Christ has healed you and set you free from this problem, also be ruled by his word so that the wonderful deliverance you've received through the medium of Emmanuel TV will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for I sharing pray your that testimony. It will be permanent for me, as I need to be permanent for everybody else who just has a face to touch. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to crave your indulgence to, uh, to bear in the choir to help me with the song. I really feel it from the bottom of my heart. You are holy, holy, you are holy. You are holy, holy, you are holy. Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy. Mesdames et Messieurs, nous avons devant nous ici euh, cette dame qui est venue ici aujourd'hui pour remercier le Seigneur pour tous ses bienfaits, le Seigneur de l'avoir délivrée de 35 ans d'alcoolisme. En effet, elle dépensait beaucoup dans l'alcool et l'alcool lui causait beaucoup de problèmes, notamment au boulot, parce que l'odeur de l'alcool, ça sentait mauvais et tout son entourage était gêné. Il lui arrivait même de boire des fois avant d'aller à l'église. Alors, euh, en temps, elle a suivi Emmanuel TV à la télévision et elle suivait le témoignage d'un monsieur qui était délivré de 30 ans d'alcoolisme. Elle a ensuite accompagné le prophète à travers une prière qu'il faisait en direct à la télé. Et elle s'est soudainement, soudainement rendue compte qu'elle est sortie de la maison sans prendre de l'alcool. C'est comme ça, sa délivrance avait commencé. Le jour suivant, elle était sortie et n'avait pas pris de l'alcool. Ainsi de suite, jusqu'à aujourd'hui, ça fait neuf mois qu'elle ne boit plus. Elle est ici pour remercier le Seigneur et rendre gloire à Dieu. Gloria a Dios, acabamos de escuchar el testimonio de esta mujer comprobando y testificando que la distancia no es una barrera. Dice que ella recibió su milagro a través de Manuel TV. Por 35 años esta mujer sufrió de alcoholismo el cual le afectaba su vida ya que todo el mundo la conocía y se burlaba de ella. Ya que era una alcohólica en todos lados a donde iba siempre le compraban botellas de alcohol. Pero desde que oró junto con el profeta TV Joshua y escuchó un testimonio acerca de un hombre que había se liberado de este espíritu de alcoholismo, esta mujer tocó la pantalla, oró junto con el profeta y fue liberada instantáneamente. Incluso ese mismo día olvidó tomar una copa de vino y desde entonces toda su, su vida cambió gracias al poder de resurrección que fluye a través de Manuel TV. Praise the Lord. We have a couple here who have come all the way from Malawi to share their testimony. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Tell us your name and introduce yourself to us. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Our names are Mrs. and Dr. Chipeta. We are from Malawi. Thank you very much. And can you share with us your testimony, starting with the problem 
that brought you to the Synagogue Church of All Nations? I came in July this year with eye problems which I've been having for 15 years. This eye problem was so severe so, to the extent that doctors couldn't help me in any way. Even my husband being a doctor, he, he, he understood that this is not just ordinary. So uh, it's a problem that I couldn't even I couldn't even drive, I couldn't watch TV, I couldn't read, and I was advised to, to be staying where there is only dark. A lot of things happened. So my husband said, okay, you just go to Scorn, where a man of God I know, he will help you in the name of Jesus. Now when I came here, I was opportune to receive the anointing water. Immediately, I applied anointing water. I could see all the pains which I was having, everything was completely gone. So our sister has just said that she was having the problem of severe eye problem um, in her eyes for 15 long years. And we have heard about how Jesus Christ healed her, but we just want to hear from you again. How is this eye problem really affecting your life then? All the people who know me in Malawi, they know that I, oh, I put on glasses. They were so amazed when I went back home, when I told them that this is what God of TB Joshua did to me. And some of them were even calling me each and every week that are you still, are you still, be able, are you still able to see? Can you see up to now? So to complete it all, these are just some of the classes, the classes I've been using for the past 15 years. But now, since that time, I've never felt any pain. I've never used these glasses again. I've never, I, I even watch Emmanuel TV 24-7. I don't feel anything. Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we just want to hear from you. How long ago was it that you received healing from this eye problem and you've no longer been using your glasses? How many months now? I came here on 9th July. So that was on the, 14th, uh, on the, four, uh, the Thursday on the 12th of July. It's when I received, the, I applied anointing water and I got my healing. Since that time up to now, all the pains are gone. I can read properly. I can do all things through Christ who has strengthened me in Jesus' name. Amen. So you mean for the last five months, you have been doing everything that you were not able to do before and you can see clearly now? Yes, I can see clearly. Thank you, Jesus. We just want you to read something so you can just demonstrate for us what Jesus Christ has done in your life. In life, I have a privilege to observe different kinds of people. This is what I couldn't, I couldn't see. And most of the times when I have to force my eyes so that I can see, they would be very painful. And if I applied uh, any medication, the next day I go to the hospital, they will tell me that you have eye infection. So I, 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 I had a very severe problem that I lost hope. So I knew that my hope is only in the Lord and in God of TB Joshua. That was why I came, and I came believing that I would receive what I came here for. And indeed, the God of TB Joshua did it for me. Emmanuel! So we just want you to read another sentence or two from this sermon just to demonstrate what Jesus Christ has done in your life. The most charming temptation. A break in prayer is a break in Christ Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. So you were mean before you were not able to do this without your glasses. I wasn't able to do all that. So now what do you want to do with your glasses now? I don't need them anymore. Why should I continue? I was just keeping them for, to, for some of the other people 
who have the same problems so that they can believe also that God of TB Joshua is really doing it and it, he can do it also to them. Emmanuel. God is truly with us and to his power nothing is impossible. So we know you also have another wonderful testimony to share. Can you just briefly share that testimony with us? Emmanuel. It was on the 2nd of, June of November, my son mistakenly swallowed a coin. So uh, he stopped breathing, and my husband being a doctor, he tried all he could, but the coin was just stuck here. It couldn't go down. So when he was booked for operation, I said, I have to, I, 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 reminded that, I was reminded that I have the anointing water with me. So I sprayed anointing water in his mouth, and immediately, my son started breathing. When they took him to the hospital, this is, this is what came out. The coin moved from there, where it was blocking his throat. Now it was in the stomach, as you can see. So you mean your son, your young son, swallowed a coin? How old is your son? My son, our son is three years old. This is, this is our son here. He is three years old. So he swallowed a coin and the coin was blocking his throat so that he was not able to breathe. Is yes, that right? Yes, yes. But after he ministered the anointing water, the coin moved to the stomach, as we can see on the x-ray here. Yes. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. And tell us what happened next. Uh, then uh, the doctors told us that we should observe him for two days, he's supposed to pass it out. Then after, uh, after two days, my son, he, he, the coin couldn't go. Then my, my husband was always asking me, is he feeling pain? Is he crying? Is he not eating? Is he vomiting? My son never complained of any pain. Since that anointing water, I knew that he set aside for God's special attention. Emmanuel. Then, on Sunday, the 10th of November, man of God was, minister, was praying. During the mass prayer, I asked my son, I asked our son to touch the screen so that we should pray along with man of God. And immediately man of God said, touch me, O oh Lord. Okay, heal me, O oh Lord, and I'll be healed. My son also said the same. Immediately he said, deliver me, O oh Lord, and I'll be delivered. My son also repeated the same, and he started crying, Mommy, my stomach is aching. My stomach is aching. To me, I was so joyful because I knew that something is going on. So I pressed so much his hands on the, on the, I pressed so much his hands on the screen. Then my son cried, cried, cried so much. Then man of God said, Amen. And I said, Amen. And he also said, Amen. And I took him outside. I pressed the uh, old newspaper so that he should, uh, he should pass, the, he should uh, poop there. And people of God, to the glory of God, this is what came out of my son, our son. Hallelujah. We know this. Uh, this image is of a sensitive nature, but it is for the glory of God. Our sister explained how her son, after placing his hands on the screen and praying with Prophet TV Joshua on Emmanuel TV, he passed out, he defecated the coin that was disturbing his stomach, that had been in his stomach, that had even stopped him from breathing. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. This is the coin which came out of my son. That same time, just after some seconds, not even minutes, this is what came out. Emmanuel. God is truly with us indeed. And this is evidence that the anointing water sets us apart for the Lord's special attention. As you can see, the original coin is supposed to look like this. Now, you can see that here, the coin is black. So you can, you can, you can have just that, that, that feel of what was happening inside his system. But my son never complained of stomach ache even one day. Emmanuel!
Thank you, Jesus Christ. Immediately he passed out this. Immediately he passed out the coin. This is what. This is what my son, our son, had to say.